Today, we're going to talk about how to neutralize the bad effects from consuming sugar, breads, pasta, alcohol, and other things. Not that you would ever go off in your program and cheat, but let's say your friends and family and you want to share this information with them. I'm going to show you how to counter some of the bad side effects that can occur when you eat uh, junk foods and other things. Now, what's interesting about this topic is if you go to the experts, and I'm talking about even organizations like the American Heart Association, they will still allow you to consume sugar and alcohol. And as long as it's part of a balanced diet, um, it's totally fine. They don't see too much problem with it. Like even for sugar, um, they allow uh, nine teaspoons of sugar for men and six teaspoons for women. Now, this is not even counting the carbohydrates. In fact, for carbohydrates, they recommend up to 65% of all your calories can be carbohydrates. That just blows me away. You have these experts in the field. And I guess what makes a person expert is how much education they have, how many degrees they have. I mean, what's so ironic about that is this is just my personal belief, and this is the generality. Um, I think the more education a person has, the more they're educated in a certain thought pattern, and they have a lessened ability to think freely. I mean, I'll even give an example with myself. I went through pre-med and then I went through chiropractic college, which is definitely different than medical school, but I quickly found out there's just not enough time to learn the quantity of data that they cram down your throat. So what we did as a substitute is memorize, okay? We memorize information, regurgitate it on the test, get through the test, and then get on to the next subject. And so there's a really big difference between learning the information, understanding it, being able to apply it and memorizing it. When you memorize something, it does not mean that you learn it and it can apply it and even that you understand it. So this is what I've been doing the last 30 years after I graduated, taking time to really understand the concepts, observe it, question it, make sure it's true. Because who knows if all this information that they're teaching in the universities is actually true or not. And this is my own personal experience. I felt that after I graduated, I felt I was dumber than when I went in because I was filled with so many confusions. I didn't have a chance to apply this information, but they do have internships, things that help you apply. So I got a little distracted. I digressed. Let's get back to the topic at hand. All right. Number one, sugar. What happens when you eat sugar is you have several things going on. You have a spike in your blood sugars, especially if you eat something that is um, high on the glycemic index, which basically means it spikes your sugar fast. And the faster it spikes the sugar, the worse off your health will be. And so we have this negative effect from the glycemic index of foods, but we also have another index. Um, I'm not sure if you ever heard about this, but it's called the glycemic load, which looks at the quantity of carbohydrates in that food. So that's a little bit different because they take the glycemic index and then they multiply it times the amount of carbohydrates divided by 100 get this number, and then that is put on another scale. So for example, you might eat something low on the glycemic index, okay, but it's not as low on the glycemic load. But like watermelon, for example, it's low on the glycemic index, but it's higher on the glycemic load because there's a lot of carbohydrates in it, okay? Then you have pineapple, which is considered low, but on the glycemic load, it's higher. And then you have a banana, which is considered low, but the glycemic load is higher. So my only point on that is that when you have more fiber, you can buffer this sugar response. So the first thing you need to know is that if you eat sugar, make sure you also add fiber with it or close to that meal to help buffer the response of the sugar. The more fiber you eat with the sugar, the less the insulin response. And one of the problems with uh, eating sugar is it triggers insulin. And fiber is one of the two things that won't trigger insulin. The second thing, when you consume refined sugar, okay, you are going to deplete certain nutrients, specifically or mostly potassium and vitamin B1. But you also deplete calcium, magnesium, and zinc, and even some other things. But potassium and B1 are the two big ones that will get depleted because as your body either burns the sugar or stores the sugar, it takes potassium 
and B1 to be able to perform this. So if you end up eating refined sugar, you need to take potassium, maybe you have a big salad, as well as maybe taking some nutritional yeast or just vitamin B1, because that will at least counter the deficiencies that you just created. Because when the potassium goes lower, your pulse rate will go higher. When your B1 goes lower, your anxiety and nervous tension goes higher. All right, the next point about sugar, and this is kind of interesting. If you're a diabetic or a pre-diabetic, or have a lot of sugar going through your bloodstream because you just ate sugar, there's going to be a lot of um, damage to four parts of your body. The eye, the kidney, the nervous system, which includes your brain, and the inside of your arteries. And so you can think about the sugar as something that's rusting out or corroding the, the body tissue so, because you're getting a lot of free radical damage in something called oxidation. So there are some things that you can do to counter that, to greatly reduce the complications of not just diabetes, but the complications of all the sugar that's flowing through your bloodstream. So if you happen to know someone who ate a lot of sugar uh, or know someone who has diabetes, including yourself, this is what I would also include. Benfotamine, okay, which is a type of B1 that is fat soluble that protects the nerves, it protects the eyes, it protects the kidney, it protects the heart, and then alpha lipoic acid. Both of those act as a powerful antioxidant to counter the complications of diabetes or if there's a lot of sugar going through your body. Now, the next point I want to bring up about sugar is just if you have extra sugar, let's say you have something called the dawn phenomena where you wake up in the morning and you have all this, like you didn't even eat sugar, just went higher in your body. Or let's say you ate sugar and the sugar is high. You can burn it off by exercising. You can go for a long walk, like 20 minutes or 30 minutes and burn off that extra sugar. So that's another way to counter the sugar that's flowing through your body. In addition to that, apple cider vinegar greatly helps regulate your blood sugars. You mix it with water like a tablespoon, and it will greatly improve your blood sugars as well as lower your insulin. Cinnamon is another very potent um, herb or spice to lower your blood sugars. And as a supplement, berberine is another one that is almost comparable to metformin to help regulate blood sugars and without the side effects. The next point I want to bring up about sugar is something called the insulin index. We talked about how sugar can create all these problems, but what about insulin itself? Because when you eat refined carbohydrates or sugar, you jack up insulin. And the lower things are on the insulin index, the better they are, the higher they are, the worse off you are, okay? So at the very lowest point, on the insulin index, you have pure fat. As you start going up the scale, normally fat doesn't come as fat. It comes with other things like protein, for example. So the more fat that comes with the protein, the lower the insulin spike. So for example, if you ate egg whites compared to the yolk, that would be a much higher insulin spike than if you ate the whole egg with the yolk. If you ate nuts, for example, that are lower in fat, versus a pecan or a macadamia nut, there's going to be a big difference in where that is on the insulin index. And then if we take a protein that has like no fat in it, that's very, very high on the insulin index. So whey protein powder is really bad for your blood sugars. So the reason I'm bringing that up is that if you add more fat to your meal, you'll buffer the insulin response. Now, we can combine all this together. Let's say you have a salad with all the phytonutrients that can actually counter some of the, uh, the free radical damage from the sugar, right? And then we add the oil, olive oil, to help buffer any type of insulin response there. And then we also add vinegar, because I mentioned apple cider vinegar lowering your blood sugars. We can add balsamic vinaigrette. Now you have this amazing countering effect. Of basically, you're just having salad with dressing to help buffer the bad effects from sugar. All right, the next thing you could do to counter the bad effects from sugar and other things would be just to do fasting, okay? What does fasting do? It turns on all the repair genes in your body. So your body's gonna go in this repair mode and very potently repair damage from things that you just did, whether from alcohol, refined carbs, or just pure sugar. So, 
fasting is a very important thing. Also, fasting will stimulate uh, your own body's antioxidant, and that will counter the free radical damage from the sugar. The next point I want to bring up is about your brain. If given the choice between glucose or sugar and ketones, your brain will choose ketones over sugar. So how can you apply that? Let's say, for example, you eat something really sugary. Well, your brain's going to suck that right in, right? It's going to affect your cognitive skills, your, your mood, and all sorts of things, right? If you took MCT oil, which turns into ketones really fast, so that will act as a substitute. So your brain will grab the ketones instead of the sugar. And at least mentally, you're going to feel a lot better um, than if you didn't do that. Let's say, for example, you went off the program and you had some alcohol. How can you counter that? Well, you have a hangover, right? I'm going to show you how to counter that. But then you also have the damage that it's done to the liver. So there's an enzyme your liver produces to turn that alcohol into another chemical. It's called acetaldehyde, which is like 30 times more toxic than actual alcohol. And so the bad feeling that you get when you drink alcohol, like a hangover, is from that byproduct. It's kind of like an intermediate uh, chemical in the process of trying to break down alcohol. And so you can take vitamin B1 to help counter that toxin, and that will reduce your hangover. The other problem with alcohol, it's very dehydrating. So if you were to take some electrolytes, okay, and more water, you would feel better as well because your brain is now dehydrated. Um, some people do pickle juice. You can also do electrolyte powder. You can add sea salt with more water to counter that. The other really cool thing you can do is take the herb milk thistle, which has very special properties for your liver. Okay, it protects the liver. It reduces the effect of alcohol destroying the cells. And this other condition called autophagy, which is the recycling of damaged tissue in your body, it will actually increase that. All right, number three, drugs. Okay, so this goes beyond sugar or refined carbs and alcohol. Let's say you take medication. There are some side effects that are going to occur. If you took milk thistle, that would protect your liver. But here's the catch. A lot of medications use the same enzymes as milk thistle, so you don't want to take it at the same time, okay? Because that might decrease the effect of the drug. I would just recommend take the milk thistle at a different time of the day. So that way you have the protection, but you don't interfere with the drug. A couple little points about drugs. Metformin depletes B12 and B1. So you want to take those two drugs to prevent a condition called lactic acidosis, which is very dangerous. Statins deplete coenzyme Q10. So you want to take more coenzyme Q10 if you take statins. Antibiotics kill off your good bacteria, and then you end up with a yeast infection. Anytime you take an antibiotic, you should always take a probiotic at the same time. And acids destroy the acid in the stomach, putting you in a situation where you now are going to have a hard time absorbing minerals, killing off viruses and other bacteria. Also take apple cider vinegar and water, and betaine hydrochloride. Both of those remedies will probably fix your acid reflux anyway. All right, the next point about grains, whether that's bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, things like that. Grains are filled with phytic acid, which blocks trace minerals and other minerals like zinc, iron, iodine, calcium, magnesium, manganese, and many other minerals. So if you're doing a lot of um, grain products, you want to uh, make sure that you replace these trace minerals and minerals. And it just so happens that the two top best foods for doing that would be organ meats like liver. And th that gives you really good bioavailable zinc and iron and other minerals like selenium, but also shellfish will do it. When you consume fish that's high in mercury, that could be very problematic to various things like your thyroid. So you want to take the antidote to mercury, and that is selenium. Selenium binds up with mercury, making mercury no longer toxic to the body. And so the fish that are high in mercury are like um, shark, swordfish, and tuna. Seafood that are low in mercury are like salmon, cod, oyster, sardines, shrimp, and canned tuna that's light. And there are many more. All right, number six, let's say you ate too much sodium or just table salt, right? Or you had MSG, monosodium glutamate, which is a lot of sodium and you feel all swollen and puffy. 
you can take potassium to counter that. So the more sodium chloride you have, or the more sodium you have, the more potassium you need to counter that. So that would definitely be like leafy greens or a big salad. Couple last points on this topic. If you found that you ate too much food and you feel bloated, you could take betaine hydrochloride and or apple cider vinegar to speed up the digestion to help you reduce the bloating. Next point, oxalates. Let's say you ate a lot of spinach or almonds that are high in oxalates, which tend to irritate your joints or increase your risk for kidney stones. You can take dairy that has calcium to counter the oxalates. This is why people that take spinach also might have some feta cheese with it. And also, if you add lemon to it, you get the citrates to also bind with the oxalate stones to prevent kidney stones. So calcium and citrate will counter oxalates. And last point, when you go on the ketogenic diet, you're going to get rid of fluid, and you might also find that you're low on electrolytes and B vitamins. I would recommend using nutritional yeast. Now, if you haven't seen this video on what would happen if you gave up sugar for 14 days, it's really interesting. I put it up right here. Check it out.